Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 61. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Chapter 6.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet Find X. Now, Chapter 6, Normal Distributions, Bell-Shaped Curves. We've already solved for X a number of times, but I want to do two examples in one video here, one for our typical test score and then one for a production run. Now here's our question. If a professor grades with a bell curve and assigns a grade of A for the top 5% of the scores, what score would you need to get to earn an A if the mean from past data was 79 and the standard deviation was 6? We've actually seen an example just like this. Here's our already in the class. Here's our picture. The area under the curve is 1 and this represents a pictorial uh, description of this 5%. So that right there, we want to determine what x is right there and what z for that matter. How many standard deviations above 79 would we need to get into the top 5%? Now what this will do is our calculation will spit out the x and that will be the marking point. Anything uh, equal to or above that will put us into the top 5%. Well, we can use the norm dot inverse. Now, we've already seen all these norm functions here. And the dist, we throw in an x. It gives us probability. The inverses, we throw in a probability. And it gives us the x. OK, we're interested in the top end here. As we've studied so far many times in this class, all of these functions go from negative infinity up to our x. We need all of the probability up to that point, not just the 5%. If we want that x, we need everything to here. If we gave it just 5%, it would give us the marking point for the 5% lowest score. So we need to go 1 minus. Remember, all the area is 5. If we subtract 1 minus 5, that'll give us a probability. Comma, we need to know the mean and our standard deviation. And there we go. The magic number is for an A, ding, 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 88.869. Now, if we want to determine Z from this 5%, we can use the norm dot S inverse. So equals norm, all of our great functions. And we want, remember, the inverses will always, will always put in a probability. The S is the standard normal curve curve, and that's all about z. So it'll spit out a z instead of an x. All right, probability, we just that's all we need. So 1.64, about 1, yeah, about 1.64 standard deviations above the mean is what you need to get into the top 5% to get your A. Now, from this, can we calculate the X? You betcha. What is, standard, what is Z anyway? It's number of standard deviations above or below. Well, we know our mean. There's a standard deviation. If we were to add these together, it would give us 1 above. Instead, we simply, to calculate our X here, we say 79, OK, plus our standard deviation times, well, Z tells us how many times z. All right, now here's another example. From past, from past population data that has a normal shape distribution, if the employees on an average production average produce 1,000 boomerangs per day with a standard deviation of 500, how many boomerangs would they have to have to be produced for the day's production level to be amongst the slowest 10% of the day. So this is a boomerang manufacturing company, right? All right. Uh, well, OK, so we have our x is number of units produced. Our mean is 1,000 standard deviation. Probability in this case, we're talking about the low end, right? So all the probability up to this point is 10%. If we have that number, we can get our x associated with that member from negative infinity up to our x, or the cumulative probability is what these functions always use. All right, so we use our norm dot inverse. The inverse functions will spit out either an x or z. This is not the s for standard normal, so it spits out the x. The probability, and it's just this because we're interested in the low end, comma mean standard deviation, and boom. 
Okay, so 930, about 936 boomerangs or less. Any day with a production total like that would, const, would be in the 10% slowest days. What's our Z? So for Z, standard normal. So we do norm dot S, forgot the equal sign, norm dot S, and it's the inverse functions that give us either an X or a Z. In this case, it's the S, so it'll spit out a Z. Whoops. We need the probability, and this is on the low end, so we simply put that in there. So it's minus 1.29 standard deviations below that constitute the 10% uh, slowest day. So from that, can we calculate our X? Oh, look, if this isn't. Uh, score, this is uh, units needed to be uh, considered part of the 10% slowest days. All right, so x is units needed. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we know our mean, and z is all, it, the median of z is number of standard deviations above or below, so we simply say, oh, well, normally we go like this. Standard minus the standard deviation because we're going down, and then we multiply by a positive number. Number of standard deviation below is 1.2, but we really can't do that here. Or I'm not going to because the double negative will give us a positive, so I'm going to change this to a plus. And that's because that is a negative. This is still a subtraction. If I go like this, F9 to evaluate, what's plus a negative number? There you go. Control Z. All right. All right, so in this video, we just saw how to calculate an x given a probability from a normally distributed distribution. We saw how to use the norm.inverse to get an x and the norm.s.inverse to get a z. All right, uh, next video, we'll see three different examples of calculating probabilities from the bell curve. See you next video.